Um, mm -hmm. On to a bit more of a local front, well, for you, um, how have you seen the, the space evolve in Indonesia and what do you see coming up in the future, okay. specifically Indonesia, because that is your, that is sort of your backyard at the moment? So you've been my friends, uh, you've, we've been friends for, for several years, right? And mm. uh, well, when, when we first started talking, I told you about uh, the possibility of projects happening. And the projects, uh, of course, my view was uh, more towards the enterprise perspective. <clears throat> and when we started about 2017, uh, a lot of people still didn't know that, you know, blockchain can be implemented in the enterprise. And uh, sometimes they implement in the enterprise but they are not implemented correctly. And there were a lot of failed projects that happened um, that are not in our portfolio, but in the ecosystem. And um, that was unfortunate, but it was a learning experience. Um, we're seeing a lot more uh, focus on the actual blockchain uh, solutions that provide business value now instead of, you know, just companies trying blockchain, so they're being more realistic with it. Like, uh, compared to, like, just a year ago or two years ago, uh, where everyone was just doing blockchain either because their boss told them to try it or because their boss read Forbes, for example, <laughs> or, um, you know, they're doing it because of ICOs back then. Mm. So, I mean, uh, it's, it's becoming more towards... I like it actually as a consultant because it, it brings it back to more traditional means of IT as in, you know, how, how the IT industry actually is developed. It's always, there's, there's always a new solution. There's always a hype cycle of, there's a, always a huge hype cycle at the beginning that, that, that um, everyone just wants to try. Like think Dilbert cartoons, the pointy haired boss wants Dilbert to try everything, even though he doesn't know what's, uh, what it's yeah. good for. But, uh, you know, a lot of people are now looking into more, um, you can say it's more traditional uh, solutions, uh, but based on the blockchain, instead of like the lofty, lofty solutions that are big bang, but are not very realistic. possible yeah. or realistic. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think it's good. And uh, the, the idea... Uh, the idea behind, you know, um, the regu regulatory perspectives as well, uh, the Indonesian government within the last year, we have, uh, you know, uh, we have a central bank and we have a financial services authority, right? Like, so some countries have this, I think the UK has it as well. So there's uh, the, the, the central bank basically manages the reserves and also like the, uh, uh, like the monetary part of it, but the financial services authority actually is the authority for the rest of financial services other than payments. So the Indonesian financial services authority already has a blockchain cluster that was starting last year. And uh, of course the association had a discussion as well. So there's a sandbox that is just for blockchain projects and blockchain technologies. I think that's, that's, that's really good. Um, it's like they're trying, uh, the Indonesian government is really trying to understand how to actually uh, bring value to the nation by using blockchain and also opening the door to like opening the, well, paving the way really to, for, for uh, companies to actually use blockchain, research blockchain. Um, there's uh, also a lot of startups uh, that have appeared within the last few years that uh, are doing blockchain then putting blockchain in their value chain, their value proposition, basically. Um, some do logistics, some do, um, some do farming, some do data farming. Um, so there, there's uh, the, now Indonesia is uh, waking up more to the reality of the technology instead of the hype of the technology, which I like. Um, it also means that I do a lot more workshops, like in-depth workshops, instead of training, you know, like yeah. uh, instead of sharing about blockchain, what is the blockchain? Nothing like that anymore. Uh, the stuff I do now is more towards, you know, um, uh, in-depth workshops on how uh, create, to create a blockchain solution for a certain use case, uh, which of course means that these are not stuff I can post on my LinkedIn yet, you know, because these are all private stuff, but it's actually a lot more fulfilling for me at least. Uh, mm. than actually just going to events and talking because, you know, 
you know, you're actually doing something. You're actually helping create something instead of, you know, just talking about it. Yes, that's good that that's finally finally happening. And and how do you think? And I don't know how much um how much travel you've been doing. Obviously, not much recently. But how do you think Indonesia oh. stands up compared to the other the other ASEAN nations? Okay, ASEAN or Asian? Because I was in China last year. Uh, I spoke at Mobile mm. World Congress. Let's do let's do Asian uh, then. Let's do a broad. Uh, let's do broad. Yeah, let's do broad. Uh, so in terms of Asia, um, when I went to China, I was uh. Well, well, China is huge. It's a huge market. And of course, I didn't get to see the entire market. But the people that I met there, um, most of uh, most of them were still using, most of them were still at the sort of the profit cycle, the hype cycle that basically ICOs and uh, IEOs and uh, crowdfunding and uh, crypto and uh, the rest of that, even though there's a lot of, like, I, I, I went there to talk on something, uh, basically blockchain for technology. I, I was on stage with Stefan Russ, who's now the CEO of Bitcoin.com. Mm. Um, so, of course, the context was there. The context was more crypto. Like, they didn't recognize Stefan Russ's name. They obviously didn't recognize my name. Um, so, perhaps the attendees were more geared towards that. But, yeah, I mean... It's it's uh, it's funny though because uh, a lot of the things that China has developed, um, even though they're not developing it via blockchain yet, like uh, I'm not talking about the digital yuan. I'm talking about like the payment systems, uh, ticketing, all of those uh, things that that they're doing. The tokens for uh, uh, loyalty points and uh, um, Weibo, etc. And of course the digital yuan now. Those were already there, they were in place. Uh, a lot of the Chinese people were users of technology that probably have some blockchain behind it or can benefit from having blockchain behind it. But uh, they're not talking about the technology yet. They're more talking about, you know, how, how you know, cryptocurrencies, that it was at the cryptocurrency stage. Um, but I think that most so, countries are like that. Like most countries, yeah, the forefront, I mean, because most people, I mean, most individuals, I mean, let's be honest, most people don't run a business. Majority of businesses aren't big businesses. So, you know, a lot of a lot of businesses don't have the same problem that, say, your conglomerate when we first started talking yeah. have. And so the only way yeah. they can see they can personally benefit from blockchain is via investment. Um, and since you can't, in many yeah. cases, buy shares in these companies, the only way you can really profit is by buying their tokens. So yeah, I'm, and I'm and I'm not dissing that approach. That. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not dissing that approach. I'm not disrespecting that that approach at all. I think it's 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 correct. It's part of the ecosystem and actually funds the ecosystem. It used to basically the only source of funding for the ecosystem. 